everybody, and welcome to another episode of Korok's Corner. This is your host, Korok Xavier. Today we're going to be uh, visiting the fantasy world of EverQuest 2, a Sony Online Entertainment Network game for the PC. Now there are many MMOs out there for the PC, World of Warcraft, Conan the Adventures, uh, Vanguard. Out of all the known RPGs out there, EverQuest 2 has captured a very special part of me. Um, I've been playing for the last 10 years, and every MMO I've tried subsequently after it, um, I've always come back here. So, um, if you've never played it, EverQuest 2 before, I always encourage you to try. It is a fantastic game. The, um, the massive MMO as it is has one of the best communities around. Um, plenty of great people play this game, and I've always had fun. Now, in this episode, we will be running through a dungeon called the Obelisk of Abzul. It is a plat run. And if none of you know what a plat run is, plat is basically the money bartering system within EQ2 itself. Uh, plat is like coinage. And you can go to several zones and earn money, basically, by doing the zone itself. So we're going to fly down here and we're going to enter the Obelisk of Abzul. This zone is basically straightforward. Um, its mechanics are simple. Um, basically as you enter in this dungeon, what you're going to do is you're going to start clearing out the room before you can advance further within the dungeon itself. So we're going to start killing some of these mobs here. Um, I'm using a level 95 Fury. Um, I have many level 95s, but uh, I have mentored down to 85 so that the mobs within this dungeon um, are con to me, which means that they will give experience. Even though I don't require experience on this character, um, it's best to see them because they will attack me because they con to me. If they're grayed out, they won't touch me at all. So. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go through here and kill the side mobs and then we'll move over to the opposite side and kill the mobs over there as well and just work our way straight down. Um, it's not that difficult, um, when, but when you are actual level 85, which is the current level to be able to enter this zone, the mobs might be a little, uh, how would you say, they might be a little bit challenging, but that's all, all the aspect of the game so it's kind of like to challenge you so I quite like that. Um, I always discourage people power leveling to 95 or power leveling in any game. Um, I do power level but only on characters that I want to try out um, but if I really like a character I'll start it from the very beginning and just quest my way through to level 95. Um, I find it more apt to know your character and its skill than just rushing through and learning thing at the highest level and kind of looking like a retard when you're in groups. So that's just my opinion. So we're going to continue killing here. When you kill enough mobs here, the main mob's going to move toward the center um, and he's going to go toward the door until you clear out the rest of the remaining mobs within this area. Um, he's already there waiting by the doorway. Once we do that, he will go ahead and he will uh, talk and get frustrated, we'll break his concentration, and he'll move into the next room. So we'll just go ahead and just kill this shit out here real quick and uh, move forward. Now, for those within my guild, um, we're wondering what my UI system look like. Well, this is, if you look at the screen, you can see where my hotbars are on the both right and left bottom, and with um, two hotbars in the center. Um, this way, I free up an entire area of my screen and I can see the game and its complexity so I quite enjoy it. Now most people uh, use Profit UI and a few um, UIs out there to basically um, adjust their UI within screen. I generally don't use any. I use the prerequisites that come with the game itself with a few tweaks here and there um, from a website which I like to go to all the time because it is the best out there. It's called eq2interface.com. It's a place where you can get the map, 
um, with all the icons, all the quest starters and stuff, so it's more easier to find, and um, you'll be able to get like new hot bars and um, eight level bars, whatever is required or necessary to help you free up your screen so that you can play the game. Um, I have 90% of my screen completely freed up, which is kind of nice, and uh, I always uh, enjoy seeing the game. So basically, we cleared out all the mobs here, and we're going to head over here and listen to him talk. Now when he's done, he's going to enter the room and we're going to follow. So we're going to walk through here and we have entered the next stage. This is the same as the first stage. we got to clear out all the mobs to get the name to spawn. There was no name in the beginning, but the second room, there will be a name here. So we're going to clear out these mobs here real quick. So um, let's take care of that. Now normally it would take you about... Um, 10 minutes with level 95 uh, character to actually go through this zone and complete it. Um, but if you are level 85 in that, don't be discouraged. This is a great place to come when you're in your 80s and basically to get advancement um, AA and basically, you know, just enjoy the, the nuance. Um, I always enjoyed this area. You can go through this zone every 18 hours, and I have 10 characters on my account. So I go through each and every one of them every day, and I usually get like about anywhere between the average of 15 to 25 plat a run, and times that by 10 characters, and that adds up every day. So it's kind of something that you know look forward to when you get more advanced and you have more characters. So, um, granted, I've spent a lot of time within the game building up my characters, so this is one of the fringe benefits, but it's yeah. something for you to kind of look out for and, and, and really strive to do because it is easy money and you really don't have to work that hard for it. Now, we're almost done over here in this staging area. We have the um, other side to do yet, but it should go very quickly. Um, Granted, I do have level 95 abilities mentored down to level 85, uh, but don't let that like fool you. This uh, zone can be challenging. It can kill you if you're not paying attention. So um, <laughs> kind of be careful when you do, okay? Sorry about that, guys. I'm just checking over some of my uh, loot options here. Um, okay, so we're going to go around here, and we're going to do Hulk Smash and uh, kill all the remaining mobs. Shouldn't take too much longer and then we'll get to the named. The object in this area, particularly this part of the zone, is to kill all the void beasts. Once you kill all the void beasts, not all the mobs, you spawn the named mob. Um, back in the day, several years ago, um, this zone was really challenging and you couldn't come in here with anything less than a, a five-man group. Um, but now, with the character advancement opportunities and Sony's tweaking of the uh, um, power system level, it's become a very easy dungeon. And um, praise the stars that it basically still gives out the money that it does. Um, so we're going to kill this Void Beast over here. And, uh, and I'm using my Merc, by the way. I can do this without a Merc, but it just goes quicker with a Merc. Um, I'm a healer, so I use a Fighter Merc. I use a, a, a Demon Monk. A dragon monk, so to speak. So, I'm a compulsive shiny gatherer, so just ignore me. Alright, now we're going to go around here and collect the last few mobs, and then we're going to kill the names. So, we're going to do this here. Now, within EverQuest 2, they're coming out with a new expansion this coming uh, year. Um, it's called EverQuest Next. However, I'm going to hold off in basically uh, starting it because I'm going to see how it does in reviews. Um, the reason for this is is that I am so addicted to EQ2 right now that I really can't see myself switching. So I'm going to wait until I hear what other people have to say about it because the EQ2 players are the most critiquic players in MMO history. Trust me, if the game's not worth playing, they come back here like I do. So um, I always trust their judgment. The community within this game is phenomenal. Um, tons of great people. The devs are fantastic. Um, and they come out with expansions every six months. So it, it's they take care of the game. And basically, they listen to what the players have to say. And they make the changes accordingly. Um, granted, some of those changes may not be necessarily beneficial for all, 
but for the lower classes and that they do make things a little bit easier hell I remember back in the original EQ1 days when if you wanted to talk to somebody you didn't have a chat window you had to literally walk up to them and initialize the conversation by hitting the hail key I mean seriously we have become so spoiled as RPGers that it's harder and harder to please us I'm very thankful for EverQuest 2 though because this is one of the best games Sony's ever produced in my opinion and it's probably one of the best out there as far as I'm concerned you may have a different theory on that but I played almost every MMO out there but EverQuest 2 just keeps sucking me in and that is a mark of a great game and uh, you know you know the facts as well as I do if it isn't worth playing you won't go back so let's go ahead and take over here and we just killed the named so we're gonna come down here now this next section this third stage here we're gonna kill all the things in this tunnel here what our object is is before we enter the threshold to the third stage we're going to target tab target the named and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna run in there and we're going to send our Merc in and we're gonna nuke him now a long time ago when this zone first came out you had to have more than one person to actually get past the third stage you literally had to have somebody go in there and jump into the lava there's these little bubbles that burst you up and you keep jumping up and down and it prevents the bubbles from hitting the named mob and when the bubbles hit the name mob he would be charged with a tremendous amount of energy which would be shot out at you and kill you instantly so now that we have our mercs we don't need to actually do that anymore and we can bypass that jumping altogether so we're gonna target him we're gonna run into the room and we're gonna come down here to the very edge threshold and we're gonna stand right here and send our merc in and we're gonna nuke him and here he goes and it's over and there we go and we got our NHS and we'll go grab our loot now I like running these runs for a specific reason it allows um, if you're a crafter you can salvage a bunch of stuff and you can make some rares and some good money okay now that we've killed our named mob here in the third stage we're gonna go over here to the opposite side on the platform and there's going to be a chest this is a chest that is, belongs to the named and this is the one that will give you anywhere between 13 to 25 plat and look at that give me 13 nice anything more than 10 you're doing good so basically once that's complete you got some coin in your pocket we're gonna go into the next room over here and we're gonna check out the fourth and final stage this this stage right now is basically um, a cakewalk with the 95 and originally back when you were in a couple expansions ago this was very difficult because when you walked in a room there was a 50 50 chance you're gonna hit by a, a high impulse energy weapon and it usually knocked you down to almost one percent of life so now that I'm 95 and the AA and the level respec has been done um, it hardly even hurts at all basically it's a slap in the face so you can heal it off really quickly now in this room the whole object here is to wait for the ambassador the one uh, shadow void creature that was in the original stage who went through the portal and you follow him through he comes through here to talk to his master um, right now he's reporting that uh, intruders have infiltrated the sanctum and basically all of his men are dead including Calix. so what's going to happen now is his master is not going to be too pleased with him and basically um, is going to argue and he's going to take his minion's life so we'll watch this now if you don't have the shadow language you will not be able to see what they say in English um, it'll be in a foreign ton um, so basically I always encourage people to actually get the shadow language as all possible and he's about ready to kill him and we'll just wait here and one thing that I do dislike is long NPC, NPCs basically having long conversations and you cannot proceed until they're all done. It is a small drawback, but oh well. I, it gives me an opportunity to get immersed within my character. Alright, he's about ready to go aggro. And for those that do not know what aggro means, it means the mob will attack within a certain area of distance. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to force shot him. I believe and 
he shall die by my hand. And there it is. Okay, now 50% of the time he's going to drop what they call uh, an exquisite chest, but he dropped an ornate chest here, which is the uh, next tier down. Uh, most of my equipment is mentored down, so it's not showing the true stats. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to see what you get to wear at high level, end level, I should say. So if you have a level 95 crafter, you'll be able to mute most of this or salvage it for rares or mute it for materials for crafting. Um, you can make good money on the broker by doing that, and I always encourage that um, for anybody that has a high level character also have the high levelist of trade skill, unless you don't like to trade skill. So basically what I'm going to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a portal to Atonica, and it's going to have uh, a druid or a, a wizard spire right next to it. And that way I can port anywhere that I can't port with my own personal port. So let's take a look here. Okay, let's go ahead and let me see here. Let's zone. The land masses um, in EverQuest 2 uh, basically are very vast. I usually go to Atonica here. Like I said, uh, Wizard Spire is nearby. Um, but I wanted to thank everybody for joining me on Korok's Corner today. I'm Korok Xavier. And I want to have a special shout out to everybody within my guild. And I hope you watch this video. I hope it's uh, beneficial and instructional to you. Um, if you have any questions, send me an in-game mail or basically uh, send me a private message here on YouTube and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. And, you know, everything that we do here at Korok's Corner is to help out the gamer. And if there's anything that you think that you can add or help me with um, to make my videos more beneficial, please let me know. I want everybody to have a very wonderful week. Take care, peace out, and uh, thank you for joining us today rate, comment, and subscribe.